The Bible said judgment is going to be on the head of the wicked. And me and you are going to have to prepare because God is an angry. I, I've been seeing the Lord uh, in a vision. He's getting angry. I've seen in a vision. He be, he's getting angry at the wickedness of our world. And we're going to have to be ready to, to make it because God, we're going to suffer. That's right. I mean, we're going to pray for food. We're going to pray. That wasn't the Lord taught, taught us to not just store up food and let it rot. He said store up food and eat it and keep it replenished. That's what the Lord told us. To keep it replenished. Or either learn to live out of garden. You can live out of garden winter and summer if you got to put a head on your head. <laughs> <laughs> all these are beginning to sorrow and then this last day God's going to try the church again you know the early church was tried man God tried the early church you say why did he do it he had to build, build us up on a tried faith how could God not try the apostles How could God not put the apostles through the fire? Just let them write about what's coming. Then me and you come along. Man, the apostles, they went through it. They stood the test too. Every one of them. Peter even had so much love to when they got ready to execute him, he said, just crucify me upside down. He said, I, I, I fell my Lord at the crucifixion and I want to die upside down I'm not worthy to die like he did on the cross I want to die upside down you know that holding him all his whole life that he, he walked off at Jesus' crucifixion he never forgave himself he tried to punish himself all the way through you know Jesus looked at him and I believe that in his heart you know after he rose from the dead, that's why Jesus said, go tell my disciples and please get a hold of Peter. Somebody find where Peter is. He said, I know he's down. I know what happened at the crucifixion. You go tell him that I want him. I want him to be over. I want him to be the leader of the flock. Go over, I want to see him. You know, Jesus knew Peter, but he done told him. He said, Peter, when I, I knew you was going to fail me when I give you the keys to the kingdom. I knew you was going to get it right on the day of Pentecost, get folks baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sin. I knew that you was going to stand up like a, like a bull, like a, like a fighter bull, and stand up on the day of Pentecost and face that mob and face the, uh, the whole Jerusalem and stand up for me and preach me. Hallelujah, I knew your future, and he knows your future. He knows what you're going to be. He knows what's in you. And get all you can get while you can. Where God will have faith in you. To stand with you in a time of trouble. Many. We already hate it. Then they should leave you up to be afflicted and should kill you. You should be hated of all nations. So we're not just talking about Jerusalem. Man, Jerusalem ain't all nations. It's just a little bitty place over yonder. Not even 30 biggest Texans. <laughs> that sound like all nations to you? He's talking to us. Think about it, at that time, people didn't even know this part of the world was over here. The settlers hadn't crossed that lake yet. Somebody said, well, how did the Indians get here? I said, well, they either here or swim. <laughs> God picked them up and put them over here because he wanted them over here. I don't know how they got here, but nevertheless, they got here. <laughs> They was here when the settlers got here. They didn't come on the boat, see? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But I'm glad they got here. I believe that God, I tell you why I believe it myself. I believe when the Lord 
scattered them. You remember when, when they were about to get to heaven without God? I remember when they were about to get to heaven without God. I'm going to give you this. Thank you, Jesus. They're about to get to heaven without God. And that's the reason God mixed us all up with these languages. I was preaching about that one time. I said, they got up there. And they were hollering, hand me some brick. They said, shabba, ba, ba, ba. Somebody said, ba, 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 ba. What did you be, ba, 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 What is it? Man, they couldn't get no bricks up there. They must own some cheating. What do you say? You ain't going to outsmart God. That's the reason you're not going to get the unborn again. Jesus said you must be born again. You're not going to get the unborn again unless you're unaccountable. You must be born again. That's, that's the key. That's the key. Is being born again. <laughs> you love me. Thank the Lord. I found that little old. Some I don't know where it come from. But anyway. I felt to give it to her. Then many shall be offended. Betray one another. Shall hate one another. Many false prophets. Shall arise to see many. Because iniquity abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's why today you see the churches, uh, sin took over all churches just about it. But he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. You know, when I was coming in, the preachers preached endearing, endearing to the end. The Baptists was preaching once saved, always saved, and they was fighting Pentecostals for preaching that 13th verse. He that endears to the end, the same should be saved. But here's a scripture God gave me for ourselves and for others. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for a witness to all nations then shall the end come right now these uh, 50 something countries in that uh, big African uh, part of the world up through there that, that's not heard the gospel and somehow or another the Lord it's going to get the gospel now. I believe that's when Jesus said the Lord would do a quick work one of the apostles. Cut it short and righteous. I believe that, that, that God is just at a point in time. You know, God knows what He's doing. You know, He knows it'd rather it be 20 years. He knows it'd rather it be 20 years. And I was been going over to the grave and praying every day over at the graveyard and, and I praying a couple of three days ago about myself Lord I said God I feel good my strength is I feel better than I felt and I mean I've never felt sick since I was here as a little boy and I said I feel good I'd like to if you don't come the next 20 years or 30 years I said, I'd like to, that at least if it's 40 years out there I'd like to 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 at least uh, live to be a hundred and still have this this youth and this strength to still be going for God. Went right up there and looked down at a tombstone and a man lived to be a hundred. And I bet I looked on, I ain't no telling how many graves, and no more graves after I had a hundred on it. Some was 80, most people died in the 70s or 60s. Uh, but somebody lived to be a hundred. A hundred years old. Uh, just almost right on the day they were born. But I, I don't want to live if I can't be doing something for God. Many false prophets. Have you know right now we've got so many different 